Oxygen Blast Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. So as we begin to look at our example application, again remember that one of Spring's important philosophies is that coding to interfaces is better. Again, this is a rule we should apply to all Java development, but Spring says this is key, or one of the keys, one of the key philosophies to application development in the Spring framework. Interfaces help promote better flexibility, again allowing the implementation class to change at some point in the future. So as our first step in developing our little simple calculator here, our electricity calculator, we're going to create a simple interface, in this case the calculator interface. In the calculator interface we've got three simple methods, ohms, amps, volts, allowing us to, as a calculator would do, convert volts to ohms, ohms to amps, and ohms to volts. Now as any interface would do for you, it doesn't define the implementation, just defines a contract of what the service is going to offer. So we've got our interface, our calculator interface, that's step one. Next, what do we need? Well, we need an implementation of that calculator interface. In this case, we need what we call a spring bean to implement that calculator interface. And here we go. Calculator impl implements our calculator interface. And if you're a former uh, electrical engineer or have some familiarity with uh, electrical uh, apparatus and calculations, hopefully these methods will ring true to you. We're going to set up a method here called ohms, which again allows us to convert from volts to ohms. We've got another method, amps, which allows us to, to convert from ohms to amps. And lastly, a method called volts that allows us to convert from ohms to volts. Notice also that there is a, an instance variable in this class, in this calculator implement class, called watts, and a setter for that variable. And that variable is used in many of the calculations. I'll provide, that, if you will, kind of the constant to be used in our calculations to ohms, amps, and volts. Now, how does that watts get set up with a value? Ah, we'll come to that in just a second. Okay, so our impl for our calculator has been set up along with our interface. Now, with regard to our spring bean, the important piece of how this bean is going to be used is dictated by configuration. We have to tell the spring container that is going to use this new calculator impl class to help other services be able to do calculations. We have to tell it how we want that particular bean set up, how we want it to be configured. We do that in this particular case through an XML document. Now you could use other apparatus to configure your spring beans, again most notably using annotations, but we're going to use simple XML here, which is really how Spring started using entirely XML to configure our spring bean called the calculator impl. So the XML is here, and we'll see that the root element in all spring bean configuration files is called beans. Yep, a lot of namespace references there, but then Inside of the beans definition is a bean, in this case for our calculator impl bean. Now our calculator impl bean, we're going to call ohm calculator. And you'll notice that it has a child element called property. Ah, notice the name of that property called watts. What do you suppose that relates to? Yep, that's going to relate back to that watts instance variable in our calculator impl. Okay, so now we've defined this ohm calculator in our spring bean configuration file. And by the way, the name of this XML file could be just anything you'd want. We'll name it spring beans XML. So now we have our calculator impl defined, and we have a spring bean configuration file, which defines the, if you will, the makeup and the structure and the configuration of that calculator impl. Now, how do we use our spring bean in, in this case, a Java SE application? Well, in this case, I've set up a little Java SE application with a simple little main method. So we've got our main method here in a class called oscilloscope. And inside of the main method, the very first thing I'll do is ask for something called the XML bean factory. 
What is the XML Bean Factory? Well, in fact, this is our spring container. This is the apparatus that will actually run our spring beans. In this case, our calculator input. And when we build our XML Bean Factory, you'll notice that we provide it the name of our spring bean configuration file. Essentially saying, container, when you come up, go read the spring beans XML in order to understand how our beans are to be configured so that when we ask for one, we'll get exactly the type of bean we want set up the way we want it. Now, how do we use that container, which we call factory? Well, we simply ask the factory to give us a bean. Factory.getBean. And we provide the name of the bean that we want, in this case, Ohm Calculator. Now, where did that name come from? Well, again, let me back up a slide and refresh your memory to the fact that the ID of the calculator info that we provide in our spring bean configuration is called Ohm Calculator. So we're essentially asking for that calculator impl bean. You'll notice we're using interfaces, so we're going to cast that to calculator type so that maybe the implementation might change later on. In fact, we'll talk about that here in just a second. So I've got an instance of my calculator impl. That was created right at this point when we see factory.getBean. It was created by the spring container. You'll notice I never had to do new calculator impl. It's done for me by the container. Oh, by the way, at that very instance as well, the spring bean container is going to read our configuration and determine that, ah, the property of watts should be set to a value of 15. That's dependency injection at work there, folks. That's that IOC that we talked about, giving or providing data and or other objects to our spring beans. In this case, a simple integer value to the watts property. So that all happens courtesy of this one line of code. Now, once I've got my calculator input, how do I use it? I simply call on its methods, in this case asking to convert um, to ohms a value of, I think it was 5 amps, or maybe it was watts, I'm not sure which, we've got converted there. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm sorry, uh, the number of ohms for 5 volts. So we're seeing 5 volts converted to ohms. And that's spring beans being used in the spring container. So that main method in the oscilloscope, uh, oscilloscope class is actually creating the spring container and then calling on the spring container, which is an instance of this XML bean factory, to give us a bean. In particular, give us the bean for our calculator impl. And it dependency injects the value of 5, not 15, sorry folks, that's a typo. Uh, dependency injects the value of 5 into its property, its watts property, and allows us to use that data inside that class. Now you might be wondering why we're actually using the calculator interface here. We could have just asked for an instance of the calculator input without an interface. However, the interface here helps to highlight the fact that underneath the covers, we can actually change code and allow the container to help us in callers of that code very easily adjust. For example, let's say in the oscilloscope world, that the oscilloscope required us to make calculations in kilojoules per second versus watts. And if you're not familiar with the electrical industry, one kilojoule equals essentially a thousand watts. Now, if that was the case, how would we change our application? Well, in fact, all we'd really need to do is go and now implement a kilojoule calculator implementation of our calculator interface, providing the same methods that you notice here, ohms, amps, and volts. But now what we're doing is not using watts as a means for that calculation. Instead, you'll notice that our class now has a kilojoules property. And it uses that kilojoules property in order to be able to do the calculations of ohms, amps, and volts. In our configuration file, our spring bean configuration file, instead of having a calculator input, we'll have a kilojoule calculator input. In fact, we'll call it the same thing. We'll call it the ohm calculator. Now we provide a dependency injected value of 0 0.015 for kilojoules as opposed to what we set up for watts. And now how does the actual oscilloscope class that uses our container and our beans change? And the answer is it doesn't change a bit. By using interfaces and having users of our spring container and our spring beans apply those interfaces in their code, 
we have completely loose coupled application code. Oscilloscope classes that use all of our service classes, things like our calculators, now don't have to know about the details. The implementation can change readily. And the Spring Framework helps us with that. It says, just give me the name, an ID for your particular calculator, how it's implemented, I'll handle those details. I won't let the users of that, in this case the oscilloscope class, be concerned with all those details about how to put together a calculator or even what it's implemented as underneath the covers. So complete loose coupling between callers of, the oscilloscope in this case, and implementers of, calculator impl in this case. And that concludes our chapter as an introduction to the Spring Framework. In this chapter, again, we've learned a little bit about the fact that the Spring is an open source application framework that helps to reduce the complexity of our Java applications. Again, meant to be lightweight. And that lightweight term comes in a couple of flavors. Lightweight in terms of its actual physical size, but also lightweight in that it tries to be non-intrusive into our existing application code. It's meant to be a replacement for, or if you will, a more abstract version of a lot of the Java Enterprise APIs. Still uses those under covers, it helps make things a little bit less complex for us in application development. Spring Framework also provides and promotes lots of philosophies that boil down to help making our applications easier and less complex to develop, easier to test and therefore better quality, and more flexible and therefore easier to maintain. And applications built on top of the Spring Framework are usually comprised of just simple plain old Java objects which we call Spring Beans. We configure those by XML or annotations, but the container reads the XML configuration and develops and manages all those beans for us. You can download Spring from springsource.org, and that concludes our chapter. Thank you very much for joining us, and I hope to see you in our Spring Framework class. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led .NET, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.